David, David, listen. I saw a sexy show. I wasn't a sexy show. What? Okay, I wasn't. <laughs> well, actually, maybe I was. What? I mean, I wasn't doing the sexy, but I was in the show. I mean, I did some sexy, like getting in there, like, <clears throat> I won. <laughs> Can I never tell you this? No! Bobby, that's not for this story, okay? This intro's too long. Okay, listen. You are gonna tell me that later, but let me set my scene. He was drunkenly draped on my lap. Asleep. Trapping me within the booth, and I could not escape. All the while, I sat in a horror watching women in Bert and Ernie masks. They started making pizza. Pizza's not sexy, honey. No, no, no. They they were making pizza. Oh, saute. <laughs> they had cooking utensils, okay? Full frontal pizza. Well, damn. And I know you're asking. Yeah? What is my life? What is this man's name who was on my lap? And how did we get here? Honestly, great questions. So let's rewind. It all started about 10 years ago when I was locked out of my apartment. And when I say my apartment, I mean my roommate's apartment. And when, when I say my roommate's apartment, I mean the guy who was letting me sleep on his couch. I walked his dog, she drooled a lot, it was gross. Anyway, I was exhausted after working for 14 hours. Damn, 14 hours? Oh, youth. Ugh, yeah, and I got home and there was a locked door. Wait, you didn't have the key? I forgot it, okay? I was in my youth. Crystal, you did that yesterday. Hush, back to my closed door. And I was sad. Yes, forgetting my keys is the worst, but I cringed at the thought of calling my roommate. Was it Ash? Yeah, it was Ash. Oh no. Ash was a promoter, i.e. a dude who makes money by bringing pretty people to the club so the club can look more popular. Yes, it's a real job, and yes, I was staying with this person. I made questionable choices. And I knew that calling him was going to turn into a night of more bad choices. Now, I'll give you the keys if you come out partying. I stopped drinking, Ash, did you know that? I mean, you're welcome to stay there until we come home. And when will that be? <laughs> 5 a.m., girl. <sighs> so I went. I went and I was really mad about it, but I was a small bean and I had anxiety. And I got there and saw Ashley and his girls and also some other guy. Of course. I'm gonna call him Ski Boy because like even like then I forgot this man's name, <laughs> but he was like an Olympic skier or something. I don't know, he had medals. So we go to the club and within seconds, a drink is shoved in my hand and Ash is like, drank. And I was like, no, because you know, alcoholism. So I drank until they left and then I just dumped it out. Nice. Then Ski Boy slid in there like, hey girl. And I was like, there are literally a million other girls here. But there weren't. Please go be a <laughs> boy to one of them. I am tired. I am not going to sleep with you. So don't waste your time. Yeah? You said that? Shh. What I really said mm -hmm. <laughs> was, hey. Oh my god. I was in my youth. <laughs> and he was all, let's drink. Look at this fancy drink I can buy. I have money. Look at me go. Mavericks. This continued for like two more club locations and Ski Boy continued to flex and I continued to silently question my life choices. Until we arrived at the box. On the outside the box looked just like a questionable nondescript building. No signs and just a man standing by a wall and a single unmarked door. Now that I think about it, this is actually very suspicious. You think? I swear, uh, how are you alive right now? I was in my youth. You're about to die in your youth. Okay, just listen. A man opened up the peephole and asked for a password. Wow, really? No, but it would have been cool if he did. It would have. Either way, I was really tired and really unhappy and really, really just tired of Ski Boy, like quietly mavericking over my shoulder, like, you want some blue? I got you blue. So we walk into this, what looks like an old burlesque theater. And Blake. Oh, Blake? Oh yeah. Strategically placed Ski Boy next to me, in a booth. Blake, despite my abstinence, wanted me to hook up. She had issues. Ski Boy, after many drinks, had mavericked himself enough to inform me that we were gonna make out. 4 a.m. and entirely unamused, I look at him like, no, we're not. Slowly leaning in close enough for me to smell the rum on his breath, he says, yes, we are. And I'm like, excuse you, boy, come at me and see if I do not cut you. No means no. Do you have medals in your ears, ski boy? Oh, good for you. You said that? No. Damn it, Chris. <laughs> I was in my youth. <laughs> okay. I give that guy a piece of my mind, though. Ain't no dude. You tell him. Hmm. 
And instead of saying anything, I just like glared over at Blake, who shot me a thumbs up. I needed new friends. And your boy was just going for it. And thankfully he was drunk enough for me to just like curve the f out of him with like a lean back. And he just, you know, fell face first into my lap and stayed there. Many men's a dream. <laughs> Damn it, David. Just saying. Well, he fell asleep and then cue the curtain. This curtain lifted on the stage revealing this makeshift apartment and there were two Bert and Ernie cosplayers standing on the stage and one was holding a pizza box. What was in the pizza box? It, it wasn't pizza. It was utensils for making pizza. No, the- Bert and Ernie Bruce almighty their clothes away and it was just sauce. Just full on sauce all over the stage. And well, they made the f out of that pizza. Damn. <laughs> it was in front of my eyes and they just, they didn't stop. They just kept making pizza. All right, well, what happened after that? That, that that's it. That's the story. The end. <laughs>